I am currently developing the game Pirate Empire. And a few episodes ago, I talked about the fact that I wanted the game to feature a very large map. But as mentioned in that episode, I would likely need to find a smart way of generating that map. Otherwise, this would be a very long and manual and tedious process. But another problem that will arise with this could be lag. A huge world with thousands of objects could cause a lot of lag if not handled correctly. And furthermore, this game is designed for the phone, so lag prevention is even more important. So these are the two subjects we will deal with for today, island generation and optimization. Making big maps in video games is a huge task. And depending how you do it, it would likely require a huge team of people. Therefore, most game developers use a lot of different tricks to save time, all for different reasons that we will get into. So let's look at a few examples. Minecraft is a basically infinite game. And yes, I know that it really isn't, but that's mainly due to hardware limitations. But how can it be so big? And almost every part of it looks structurally correct. A person can't have made it from scratch because every time you create a new world, it's random, right? Well, no, a person has not made that. Essentially, what Minecraft does is that it does generate all the blocks almost randomly, but with a humongous amount of rules. Like, grass should appear around high 50, diamonds will appear below 15, and such. With enough rules, at some point, you will actually end up with something that looks fairly correct. And yes, I know that this is a huge simplification of the process. I simply don't have time to go into details around this in this video. I might in the future though, wink wink. No Man's Sky actually have a very similar way of dealing with this. It is based on the same idea. All planets are randomly generated with a huge amount of rules. But the entire universe uses only one seed. So no matter who is playing, they will see the same planet in the same position. And yes, Minecraft also has seats. It, it is the same, but again, a another day. But what about other games that aren't based on this random world generation principle? Well, funny enough, a lot of other games do something similar. Not all, naturally, but procedural generation is, as far as I've understood, a somewhat common practice to use when generating huge worlds, since it saves a lot of work hours. The only difference being that they use the random world generation before they publish. That way, if they don't like what they what they get, they can redo it and hopefully save a lot of time. And that is what I want to try and implement. So I tried making my own island generator. And this is where my theory fell apart, because even though I can explain the idea behind this, I am not able to perform it myself. I have watched many videos about people making procedural terrain, and I understand the general principles, but in short, it is not my area of expertise. And this was the best I was able to come up with. One thing I found very interesting is this video by Jonas, where he talks about creating these islands for the game he has been working on. And the idea of having the islands be more flat and to add things to it based on where it is already generated seemed very smart. But then I realized that I'm really not great in creating 3D models and kind of dropped the idea again. At this point, I had probably wasted somewhere between 8 and 10 hours. So I looked at the Unity as a store. If someone else had made something like this, then maybe I could save some time. And that was. So I experimented with that. And hey, it's actually not bad. But there were a few things I wanted to change. And this is kind of the reason why I prefer to not use other people's code whenever I can avoid it. Even though this is a great asset, it did a few things that I wanted to change. One quote unquote problem was that it used mesh colliders for spawning the different objects. Which probably is the best way to do it. But in short, a lot of mesh colliders aren't the best for performance and I couldn't really find a smart way of removing them again. Also, I will still need to add all the houses and details after, so it didn't really eliminate my problem. 
And at this point, I had probably used a total of somewhere around 15 hours researching and experimenting with basically nothing to show for it. And I started to wonder, am I overcomplicating this? <laughs> basically, no matter what solution I go for, there will have to be some kind of manual tweaking. And even though the original intention was for this solution to make it easier, it has so far ended up becoming the opposite. And this is the funny thing. Even though I just told you all of this, I have actually decided to go with a different solution. But hey, at least you hopefully learned something. Although, to be clear, I think that some kind of automation would likely have been a better solution if it was someone else developing it who had more experience than me. And I think that this is one of the pitfalls you just fall into whenever you create bigger projects. Especially when solo developing, even though that we did all of this prep work that I talked about in the second episode, there are just sometimes things just doesn't work. And when that, when that happens, I think you should just try and stay, take a step back and see if there is another way. So I ended up going with a way simpler solution. I tried to prepare a lot of pre-made prefabs. A lot of already built houses, ducks, grass, islands, and so on. Which hopefully is going to make it a lot quicker. The idea is that instead of having to create all these small items all the time and put them together, I pre-built all the houses so it's more or less drag and drop. And I really hope that this does make it simpler. And if I put my goal somewhere between the 30 to 50 range of islands instead of the 200 range, I actually think that this will benefit quite a lot. So now, that leaves us with only one problem left for this episode. Performance. And this is likely something that we are going to cover in one more episode at some point. When trying to make huge open worlds like this, you have to account for performance. If everything is always loaded, the game would be unplayable. Try playing Minecraft with play while placing like 2000 hoppers in a close area and you'll see what I mean. So, how are we going to deal with this? First, as far as I can tell, Unity doesn't render the graphics outside the camera's field of view. Which seems to be correct since the amount of VRAM used while rendering seems to stay around the 50 megabyte, somewhat consistent, which is fairly good. Meaning that in terms of the graphics, we don't really have to worry. But what in terms of the code? All the islands in the world have code running in the background, which we also need to deal with. Different games deals with this differently. Again, one common way is to generate or destroy what you need so to randomly like we talked about before. That way, it only loads whenever it's created. Another way is to load everything in chunks, detecting whenever something is outside of a certain chunk and deactivating and activating it based on that. But since we only have like 30 to 50 islands, chunks might be an overkill solution. So instead, I used a really simple distance calculation, and if an island is within a certain distance, it activates or deactivates meaning that there ideally would never be more than one island of code running at once. This isn't an ideal solution either, since this, there's a lot of unnecessary calculations, but I therefore set it to only do this calculation every 20 milliseconds instead of every frame. From a computer science point of view, the square root operation is also rather expensive, so I would generally try to avoid it, but as far as I've understood, it isn't too big of a deal in modern hardware. So I, I will let it be for now. If I happen to encounter problems later, this can naturally be optimized. But that is basically everything I've done for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next time.